Well, hello everyone. This is Rosa Schmidt. I'm with the Center for Energy Workforce Development and the Troops to Energy Jobs Initiative. Um, our focus here is really to, to uh, recruit and hire veterans into our energy positions across the U.S. Um, just a little bit about the energy industry. We're a, a company, an industry that hires and is essential. And so um, typically we have uh, right now on average about 4,500 jobs posted every single day. Uh, even last year with COVID, if you take a look at the number of jobs, we were probably at 3,800 every single day available for postings. So we did, um, there were some, a little bit of a dip, but for the most part, our energy companies were still hiring and hiring for uh, essential jobs. Um, and so um, I encourage you to uh, to think about the en energy industry as a potential career path. And we're not talking about jobs, we're talking about careers. And you'll see from our esteemed uh, panelists today um, that it, it is a career. Um, I spent 25 years in the industry and loved every minute of it. So I'm going to go ahead without further ado. I think you want to hear from uh, the panelists and not from me. So I'm going to introduce um, introduce them all and then we'll start with some dialogue. Um, Larry Wilson. Larry is Director of Field Operations at Avangrid. Dave Ulosas. He is Senior Vice President of Renewables at um, Berkshire Hathaway or Nevada Energy. Um, Jennifer Heron. She is a Senior Project Manager of development at Nextera Energy. And then last but not least is James Mendenhall. And James is the manager of commercial renewables at Duke Energy. So I'm gonna start and ask each one of you to talk a little bit about yourselves. Give us a little bit about your military background so that um, the folks listening can, can kind of relate. And then if you talk a little bit about what you do currently, what your current job is, how you got there, et cetera, that would be great. So I am going to uh, start with Jennifer. Do you mind? Certainly. All right, so my name is Jennifer Heron. Like uh, Ms. Rose said, is I am a developer here with NextEra Energy Resources. Um, we are down here, our headquarters is in Juno Beach, Florida. I happen to work in Colorado, uh, in Oklahoma. So we are proof that you could be anywhere in the world uh, living and working wherever your, your business might be. Um, my background is United States Navy. Uh, go Navy, beat Army. I had to make sure I got that in at least one time today. <laughs> and uh, I did ROTC in college and then got into um, working to a small business after college. I did, uh, sorry, I did the Navy for the 10 years. I did surface warfare officer um, out of Hawaii and San Diego and Maine and Norfolk. And then into Naval Expeditionary Combat Command uh, for an opportunity in the reserves for six years. Worked in small businesses prior to coming over to NextEra. Uh, and in, in the NextEra world, I've held multiple jobs over the last 10 years from junior sourcing to leading teams in the sourcing group with billions of dollars and now into development and developing projects, uh, multi-million dollar projects across the US. So really a great opportunity. I've had a lot of fun doing that. All right, terrific, thank you. All right, uh, why don't we go to James? Uh, hello, my name is uh, James Mendenhall. Uh, I work with Duke Energy Renewables as a commercial renewables manager. Uh, basically, we uh, uh, I retired from the Navy. I was a submarine, chief submarine sonar technician for 20 years. Uh, I got out in 2014 and moved back to North Carolina. And uh, you know, if you look at the history of solar, uh, solar has really been picking up in North Carolina. We're number two in the country. And, uh, you know, 10 years ago, we were number 48th. So there's been a lot of solar in, in North Carolina the last decade. And uh, I, I got out at just the right time. Uh, I started as a uh, solar technician. Uh, and uh, within a year, I was promoted to a uh, first scheduler planner uh, for solar operations. And uh, about a year later, I, next thing you know, I'm the uh, uh, operations manager for Team 2. And uh, I told my boss, you know, in the next three years, I kind of expect to be VP, but we'll see how that works out. <laughs> um, but uh, we have solar sites. Uh, we have five teams throughout the country. We got sites in Long Island, New York, Orlando, Florida, Texas, uh, 
uh, all the way out to California. And uh, I myself, I manage 17 solar sites here in East North Carolina. Um, and when I when I retired in 2014, I had no idea that I would be in utilities. I, you know, like I said, I was a submarine sonar technician. I thought my skill sets were going to be limited to uh, uh, Lockheed Martin or Manassas up in D.C. Um, as a contractor. But uh, I came home and, and I lucked out and uh, solar has been picking up and doing good for me ever since. That's great. And, and, and the energy industry, how did you apply for that? Did you is that something you wanted to do? Uh, not not initially. You know, I, I went to some job fairs um, when I when I got out of the Navy. Uh, I really didn't really have a plan. Uh, we had just uh, a, a little history. I was on the USS Montpelier in 2012 and uh, we had a class A mishap. Uh, I checked on board as a 3MC. And, um, and about a week later, uh, we had a, a collision with the San Jacino and I went into a, a year and a half of veil in Newport News Shipyard. And uh, if you've ever been in that situation, you know, as a 3MC or, or any, anyone on the crew, uh, maintain the proficiencies. There's a schedule that keeps getting pushed to the right. And uh, so my last year and a half, uh, I took my first TAPS class, which is the uh, transition assistance program schooling that the military offers. Uh, three weeks before I got out. And, uh, you know, I was kind of behind the power curve then because most people that attended those classes had already been there two or three times prior. And uh, so when I got out, I, I knew I was coming home and I thought the, you know, with my skill sets and my cockiness, uh, I thought that, you know, people would be beating down the door. Uh, it didn't really happen that way. Uh, so I started, uh, my first opportunity to work was uh, construction. So, as I said, solar was uh, picking up big in my, my hometown. And uh, I actually assisted uh, uh, a company called Strata. And we built three solar sites uh, in neighboring towns. And uh, as I was doing the construction, you know, I knew someone had to maintain it. So I asked questions and started getting smarter about how the, uh, how the operations of solar worked. And I applied for some uh, various positions. Uh, and uh, Duke Energy actually uh, picked my resume up and interviewed me via phone. Uh, and I was actually working down in Birmingham, Alabama after going to a uh, headhunter uh, military career uh, center over in uh, Norfolk. And uh, I got a job working in Birmingham. And uh, they, I worked, worked there for about three months and that was my probation period. And I was about to sign on for the long haul and, and uh, I had to cancel a lease I just signed and come back to North Carolina and uh, been working with Duke ever since. That's great. Thank you, James. Appreciate uh -huh. it. Okay, Dave, would you mind going next? Sure. Uh, Davey Loses. I'm currently living in Las Vegas, Nevada. You can see our lights from the satellites if you want to try. Uh, I was a an enlisted guy in the Navy. Uh, I was taught, trained, and then taught others to run nuclear power plants, and then uh, also served on board a submarine and a nuclear cruiser. So I had quite a, a wide variety of experiences in the Navy. The, when I got out, I got to take advantage of the burgeoning gas turbine industry, jumped into that and worked in that industry for a while. As a, a military guy, it was, it was interesting kind of being in that dynamic because what I found with what all military members have and really prevalent now in the renewables area is that if you have driving ability, you can succeed beyond your wildest dreams. So when I got out of the military, a uh, young guy, uh, family have been going to school for a long time, uh, like many of the student veterans are they're going to be on this uh, presentation or see it. Uh, those folks uh, should really look towards their education, but also look towards what the military taught you to do, which is one, uh, you have an ability to learn beyond most other people. Uh, the military insists that you learn. <laughs> they will ensure that you learn whether you like it or not. So you, use that to your advantage when you get out there and really look at that driving ability. So I, I transitioned from what was the nuclear uh, industry to the gas turbine industry, uh, went to the coal industry. Yeah, I know that's not renewables, but we're, we're getting there. The uh, So when you go to the coal industry, uh, I also picked up along with all my responsibilities there, I had hydro and wind turbines. So the next job I went to was a promotion, kind of all along the way getting promotions because I kept, you know, like James, watch what you ask for, James, because when you start asking for that vice president job, they might just give it to you at some point. <laughs> so uh, I ended up with that VP role at a couple different companies. 
and one of the companies was to integrate wind into our system. So Mid American Energy in the Midwest is where I worked, and has uh, they will be at 100% renewables here in the not too distant future, perhaps this year. Uh, from there, was able to kind of jump into a different job down here in Nevada, uh, building solar farms, and we started at about 10% renewable penetration roughly, and we're at 30% this year, and we'll be at 50% in uh, by 2023. So the the kind of the, the quick discussion here is for me, it was a natural transition to go from what people thought was going to be the energy source for the future to actually being part of the future, which is where I'm at now. And it's a fantastic opportunity for everyone and really let your military backgrounds and your careers shine when you step into these roles, because it is really about driving ability. For most of that path, I did not have a degree at Lots College, but no degree. So I had to eventually had to circle around and finish up what the student veterans are doing, which is get that paper. But remember, the paper only opens the door and use what the military taught you, which is drivability and ability to be trained. So uh, I think there's lots of other things folks will talk about and we'll probably chime in with some other items along the way here. So thank you. Great. Thanks, Dave. And I think you make a, a wonderful point, which is so true, that the degree only gets you in the door. And folks have to remember that it is the rest of what you bring to the table. Um, and sometimes the, the degree is just a piece of paper. Absolutely. Um, and the other thing is sometimes you get a degree that doesn't make any sense. But yet, because you have that degree, you're able to then pivot and be able to get a job that you really want, especially in the energy industry. And I've heard stories of folks that were a veterinarian, got a degree as a veterinarian and ended up in the energy industry. Um, and we don't take care of animals, but uh, they they were able to, to get a job. So um, anyway, let me go over to Larry. Larry, let's hear from you. Well, thank you, Rosa. No, and, and to echo what, what Dave said, I think, um, you know, translating our skill sets uh, from, from our military experience, it's it's amazing to see how quickly our veterans can can pick up you know the the different trainings that we offer them so i i, I completely agree on on the point that he made i started out as a a nuke I'm a mechanic uh, in the surface fleet in the navy so similar uh, career path as dave there um i i made it all the way up to a chief machinist mate and and got out of the navy uh, back in 2012 um, and that's where I, I started looking for a job similar to uh, everyone else on this panel. You know, we, I had some direction, but not uh, not, a, not a solid idea. I thought I would just go right into new power like, you know, 90 percent of my friends all thought the same thing when they got out. Uh, but what I started seeing was, uh, you know, there was more opportunity for to, to stand out, to, to, to grow in a growing industry rather than one that, that's, that's so established and and, uh, and kind of lockstep with, um, you know, what has already been out there. So when I saw an opportunity to join with uh, Avangrid as a, as a wind turbine technician, yeah, I, I jumped at it. Um, and to your point, Dave, I think at the time I didn't have a degree, I didn't have any uh, you know, civilian certifications. You know, I had to sell it entirely on my ability to learn and translating, you know, making power is making power, you know, just it, it's all just different ways of doing it. Um, so get got into the technician role and and just excelled at that i absolutely loved uh working on these machines they're all uh uh it, probably the most satisfying job i've ever had because you know you get to work on these things hands-on you get to really see your the, the results of your hard work as you flip everything back on and you get exposed to a lot of things really quickly so that i grew a lot as a technician um very quickly i moved into management um again with no degree uh, managing a, a $300 million wind farm in, in Northern California. So that was quite a challenge, you know, at, at my very, you know, early stages of my career. Um, but again, just your ability to learn has, you know, just paid dividends. Uh, after doing that for two years, I moved up into health and safety. So, uh, you know, a lot of the rules with OSHA and, and, and in the field and of uh, utilities is based on either aviation or nuclear power. You know, that's usually where they're their roots come from. Uh, so I, I kind of already naturally spoke the language and uh, was able to, to expand upon that and, and grow my uh, my resume from there. Uh, again, still with Avangrid, I moved on from that role and now I, I direct operations for all of our um, all of our operations across the US. Um, and one amazing thing about 
our footprint just geographically. Um, you know, when you look at every one of these renewable companies that, that is represented here, we operate in many, many states. Um, 27 states in my case, uh, and all of these rural areas and, and places close to people's homes. And I think that's something that, you know, I, I focus on when I'm talking to other veterans that are getting out. You know, you don't have to go, you know, to Chicago to be a, a new power operator. You can you can be a technician or a plant manager in in Texas, in Colorado, in Wyoming, Oklahoma. Um, and a lot of these things, these jobs feed the, the communities that they're adjacent to. Um, you know, so these these jobs are local. They're um, they can't be exported. Um, and there's a lot of security in the growth that we're expecting. So it's it's a really great time to get in. That's great. Great. Yeah, Rosa, I wanted to kind of follow up on Larry there for a second. He's right. I, that's probably actually one of the most important things we tell veterans coming out when we talk to them is you don't have to be on the coast for solar or down south for solar or in this middle of the country for wind. You can be anywhere. Our industry now covers all 50 states. We're in Canada. We're getting into Central America. We're off. We're in the water. We're on land. You can start in one location and as you grow like James and Dave and, and Larry, you can either decide to stay in that location if you want to, or you can grow throughout the country and have different regions you go to. So it is such a great opportunity with what we do. You can go anywhere. You don't have to be pigeonholed to stay in one place. You can go anywhere with this job. And as you, the biggest thing is, like kind of Dave said, is you've got to be willing to learn and take that chance to do a little more each day, be a little Semper Gumby. And I promise you, you the entire US is open to you any of one any one of our companies and all of the folks we work with in our industry you can go anywhere to do anything in our industry there's so much opportunity it's not any one state any one city or any one individual job within our industry yeah and i'll chime in on that the uh i've worked everywhere from upstate new york to nevada and everything in between and each one of those was a slightly different job that allowed for greater growth greater potential you just always have to keep refocusing on what you learned in the military and what you learned in school and what you learned through experience and keep driving yourself to that next opportunity. And, you know, if you want to stay in the same location, you absolutely can do that as well. So we're not saying you have to move to be promoted or to have additional opportunities, but certainly if you want that opportunity and you want to see different parts of the country like I have, it's been fantastic. And some of us military folks, you get a little bit of that wanderlust. You, you kind of <laughs> used to rotate in every couple, three years. You know, and you can even kind of talk to people we hire about that. Hey, you know, at three years when you start to get antsy, you know, don't quit. <laughs> Let's talk about what that next opportunity is. Let's think about that because most of us are, are used to a normal rotation of assignments. Right. So it, it's helpful to talk to folks about what that means and, and help the veterans through that. So looking forward to seeing the student veterans that are watching this at some point. Yeah, great, great. Thank you for that, absolutely. Um, Jennifer, you, you mentioned earlier about the fact that you're in Florida, Juneau, Florida, but you work in Colorado. And can you speak a little bit? It's really interesting to hear what your day in the life is like. What is your job like? So as a, uh, a project manager, developer uh, in the renewables business in both Colorado and Oklahoma, um, I really have a unique unique day. Um, you, could, you could be talking to the governor of a state uh, then next thing to a commissioner of a county and then to a landowner who has five acres, who has 50,000 acres. Your entire day is, is a mix every single day. There's always a new opportunity for people you're going to meet to introduce your company, introduce your projects. Um, so there's a lot, I, I will admit for my job, there's definitely a lot of flying, um, getting to and from, obviously being from Juneau Beach, Florida, going out to Colorado and Oklahoma, um, but it's a lot of fun. I mean, I really, I didn't know much about, I still don't know much about Oklahoma. So anyone on this who sees this video and asks me any Oklahoma questions, I probably can't answer much other than throwing cow chips. I'm still working on the Oklahoma part, <laughs> but I've had a blast getting to know different states and getting, I also worked in Indiana for a little while. Kind of like Dave said, I worked, I worked uh, a little bit of the Carolinas, Georgia, Northern Florida, um, but every day is different and it's, you can, you're working with internal teams. Um, we have just a, most of these companies here, we have lots of different business units. So herding cats is really what my daily job is. It's just figuring out, okay, what's today's problem and how do we fix it? And is it, and who do I need to go find? I mean, you don't have to be the subject matter expert of any one thing, but you need to know who they are and you need to know what questions to at least ask them. 
Um, so that's kind of what your daily job is. It's kind of, your your day could be sitting in the governor's office of Colorado or sitting in a landowner's house at eight o'clock at night on their dining room table talking about what does harvesting the wind on their property mean and still letting them grow the crops that their family has been doing for 150 years in that area and how you can help them utilize their land another way. Um, and on top of that, like I said, I also work as a employee resources group. We are veterans of energy, veterans of Nextera here at Nextera Energy Resources with our 2000 veterans. So probably several days a week, I work with different veterans across our company, helping them with career choices, networking, um, helping them get signed up to the VA. Uh, little things that we kind of take for granted when we're active duty, but most of us don't live right next to a base anymore. So trying to kind of keep people, you know, assimilated with the military side that we came from. And then also connecting, I mean, it's it's a great opportunity to meet veterans in different parts of the con country and say, okay, you know, what connections do we have and, and what can I do to help you along the way? So it's it's a every day is different. Um, every day is a new challenge. Um, but it's a lot of fun. I kind of like that from the military that it's not just you don't just wake up and you, you you know, sit at a computer doing the same thing every day. I might be in a different state, might be with a different meeting, but it's really, really a lot of fun because it's always a new challenge. Thanks, Jennifer. Um, you talked about the ERGs or the employee resource groups, and I can guarantee that every single one of you have ERGs in your company. The majority of our energy companies have employee resource groups or multiple employee resource groups if they're at different locations. So uh, again, creating that camaraderie. Absolutely. And just to add to that, Rosa, I think um, they're, they're so important and I think it's uh, it's important for our veterans on the on the call to, to understand that those are available to them when they get out at, at most of these organizations. Uh, it was terrifying for me getting out and and knowing that I was leaving behind that family that you've built, you know, in the in the Navy and the military. So um, knowing that you would have that link to your your brothers and sisters that got out, you know, before you and have gone through the same things you have was was really useful for me. So that that's a great point. That's great. James, I'm going to ask you, if you don't mind, you had said you manage 17 different locations across multiple uh, different states. Can you talk a little bit about a day in the life and what does your day look like? I can't hear you. You're on mute. There you. Me. That's that's one. That's one, that's an example of how my day goes. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, it's uh, coming from, you know, where I came from in the military, submarines. It, uh, it was really operations was pretty much uh, majority of my, my career, even on shore duty. Uh, you know, I was at IUSS commands and, and constantly monitoring, analyzing and and making reports. And, uh, you know, coming coming into solar, it's pretty much the same thing. I've got a small team, uh, 17 sites. I've got eight technicians. One SRC, uh, who is site resource Standard, handles the logistics. I've got uh, I got a planner uh, scheduler, and uh, together we work together just like a, you know a, a small division on a on a boat uh, or a ship. That uh, you know we we make things happen. Uh, we have corrective maintenances, we have preventative maintenances that we have to plan and schedule and and order parts for. Um, there's a there's a you know, a, a rhythm to it. You know, every year about this time, I start working on budgets for next year, uh, planning on uh, what sites are coming in or out of warranty, how much do I need a budget for, you know, unscheduled maintenances. Um, you know, and when I first took this position, you know, I was scared. I was like, uh, I, I don't really, you know, that's my weakness. I can I can fix equipment. I can lead people. I, handling a budget, I don't know. Uh, but I come to find out that handling the budgets isn't a problem. I just don't understand accountants. Uh, they speak a different language. Um, <laughs> we start talking about depreciation cost, and I'm like, hmm, that, I understand what depreciation is, but how does that affect my budget? You know, and and it is it, it gets a little gray areas. We start talking about lenders, but uh, but day to day, uh, I come to work. Uh, I've got a set rhythm. About twice a week, we have a an all hands call, you know, like on teams or our phone calls back in the day. And we would just talk about uh, maintenances for the week, what our plans are. Uh, we have one on Friday. We talk about how the plans worked out or did not work out. Um, you know, and, you know, my guys, you know, we sell sunshine. You know, if it's raining outside, we, we, we find something else to do, whether it's work on training uh, or admin. Um, 
uh, pre-job briefs for upcoming work in the next weeks, uh, planning outages, uh, all sorts of good stuff. It's just like uh, it's planning, like planning the schedule for a ship. You know, going out to see when you know when are we going to do our workups, when are we going to do our um, upkeeps, and uh, uh, really not a big change as far as the stress level of coming from. You know, it's actually it was it was. Like I said, we sell sunshine. You know, we're not gonna right. we're not gonna dive and not come back up. So it's uh, that that part of the stress is is is, is nice to have. But uh, um, yeah, it's uh, that's pretty much the day in the life of Thank you. James. Thank you, James. James, James. a yeah. quick question for you, James. Your guys, are, usually the guys in the field, are some of the most innovative ones we find because you guys figure out how to fix a problem that may not have a normal solution. Um, especially with 17 sites, do you constantly find new ideas being popped up that kind of work their way through your, in, maybe into new operating procedures or new safety ways of doing business or actually just more efficient ways? I mean, I noticed the field always comes up with something that none of us thought about because you guys are physically handling it day to day. It's funny you brought that up, Jennifer. As a matter of fact, one of my other collateral duties is I'm also the lead for the uh, solar procedures group. So, when things come up, um, we uh, actually meet once a week. I have a team, uh, well, not a team, I have a team, but it consists of one or two members from other solar teams. And we, uh, you know, we've gone to a special class uh, for, for procedure writing and uh, and we come up with corrective procedures, uh, you know, not necessarily work packages in the Navy, but we come up with a procedure, corrective maintenances or preventative maintenances. Um, and, uh, and as far as, when things come up or events happen, you know, we have a special database called Plant View where we track uh, uh, events like fires, um, uh, near misses, any safety related events, and we you gather lessons learned and uh, come up with new processes or controls to prevent that from reoccurring. Um, and things happen, you know, solar's, I, I joke around about it being, you know, we sell sunshine. There's a lot more to it than that. You know, we still have you got to think about it. A solar site has thousands of yards or miles of of uh, 10 gauge, 12 gauge wire uh, strung out for you know the source PV source wire, and uh, all it takes is a pinch point on a on a tracking system or a, a rodent that wants to nibble on some insulation. Next thing you know, you got uh, uh, potential fires, and uh, and you know we train our guys how to respond to make sure that uh, you know there's and you know. Uh, Another casualties that uh, you, you would suffer on a uh, solar field like uh, pad mount transformers. It's not really a dangerous chemical, but they're filled with mineral oil. But uh, we have to check, you know, we have certain plans in place to make sure they don't get into the waterways. Uh, we check for spills and leaks uh, routinely. We have spill kits strategically placed, depending on how the field is laid out. And uh, and there's, all, like I said, we, we, we keep it's a repetitive process with all the maintenances we do, and uh, we we try to keep in, keep improving as we go on, as we get older. That's great, James. Thank you for that. I'm going to switch gears now, and I think that uh, it would be great to talk about some of the innovative work being done by the industry. We know that the energy industry places. Ex um, um, lots of importance on renewables and the environment, uh, really important to the industry. And so, and we've heard from Dave, we've heard from Larry in terms of some of the things that the, the focus of becoming, um, you know, carbon neutral and becoming um, totally renewable. Um, I'd love to hear more about those projects. And along with that is uh, the folks on on that are listening probably are looking for jobs, obviously, or will be looking for jobs. So maybe talking about those those projects and then what are some of the jobs that you're looking to hire? What kind of folks, what kind of degrees and what kind of jobs are you hiring for? So, Dave, would you mind starting off us starting us off with that, please? Sure, I'll talk a little bit about the projects uh, here but also across all of our sister companies. So Berkshire Hathaway Energy is a, a group of multiple utilities from Pacific Core in Wyoming, Utah, also uh, Rocky Mountain Power in similar territories, Mid-American Energy in the Midwest in Iowa. And then you've got Envy Energy out here along with our pipeline group. It's kind of all over the country. So we have a wide variety of different things that we do. We have everything from hydro to wind to solar 
two batteries, which I'm kind of leading the way in for us. And each one of those is a slightly different, unique set of circumstances for people looking for jobs. We hire everything from uh, engineers to operators to accountants. I, know, uh, I have the same kind of thoughts that James does around accountants. You know, I'm not an accountant, so I'm kind of, you know, I'm not disparaging any accountants that are listening in, okay, or future accountants. We need you <laughs> because, <laughs> you know, one of the things that I've learned a long time ago was to find people to, to work around me that are better than me at certain things. And I look for those people who are outstanding at that because then I can just say, okay, go figure this out and walk away. And, uh, you know, so from a career perspective, everything from operators to engineers to executives, procurement was mentioned before. You know, this, that is incredibly important. You might not think of that, but when you're, you're kind of doing what Jennifer does and you're buying billions of dollars or something, you know, a 1% betterment in price on that is a lot of money. So you have all of these various opportunities across all the spectrums. And one thing I, I don't want folks to take away from that because all four of us are Navy vets, that this is primarily a Navy dominated industry. In fact, my industry out here in Nevada is got a lot more Air Force folks in it than Navy simply because we've got Nellis Air Force Base, which is close by. Uh, in Iowa, we had a lot of Air National Guard folks because that happened to be a huge base up there. So all different branches of the service are welcome in this industry and the skills that you have there to really focus on those when you get out. You have the ability to learn beyond most other humans on the planet. The military will insist that you learn and they will force that on you and you can take that lesson with you out into the commercial industry and really be better than everybody else around you if you choose to be. So I, I would say that we hire for a wide variety of folks across the entire country. Literally, all the folks that are represented on this call, I'm doing deals with these companies right now. So while it may seem like it's uh, spread out across the entire country, it's really a pretty close-knit community. So when you're working with somebody that's at NextEra today, well, they might be working for me tomorrow. And you have opportunities across the entire country to live where you want to live in the environment that you want to live in. So I think the career opportunities are just incredible in this industry and are going to get even better. Uh, today, we don't know what long-term storage looks like. Storage is so for, you know, for James, he sells sunshine. And for some of the other folks, they sell wind a little bit. You know, that's great. It doesn't always show up when you want it. So I need to be stuffing that into some sort of storage. So what's making a little bit of a resurgence is pump storage hydro. Imagine a hydro plant with a pond at the top, pond at the bottom, and you basically pump water from, you let water flow down from top to bottom, and you pump it back up. And I couple that up with all these technologies we talked about, and I need people to run those and design those. And what was once a dying industry in the hydro uh, arena is now a booming industry because we don't have people that have that skill set anymore. So pretty much any any career that you want to look up in the military uh, has uh, an opportunity for us. And certainly nearly everything that you want to learn in school, even if it's uh, an English major, you know, I'll tell you, not great at press releases. OK, so we have CorpCom folks that, that do that kind of stuff. And generally, I don't do even discussions like this. I let CorpCom do that. But uh, all of those career paths are available to folks and really respected and desired in our industry. So it's really across the board. It more centers towards ops and engineering, but don't preclude yourself from any career path. Absolutely. Thank you, Dave. Larry, do you want to chime in? Well, absolutely. Um, you know, and, and Dave, you touched on a lot of great points there. Um, you know, the the breadth of all the opportunities in renewables is is enormous. Um, you know, I have I have a lot of Army folks that work in our logistics uh, side of things because you know nobody moves things like like the Army does. You know, so um, most of my direct reports are are military veterans. It's split pretty evenly between uh, aviation and and Navy. Um, and and army, so it's it's pretty impressive to see the the different types of career paths you can pick up on, and what really um, you know cemented my commitment to the industry has been just the the innovation. Um, it was really refreshing getting out of the government where everything's very lockstep and very uh, rigid. You know, you, you literally have to go to Congress to get a new procedure for changing out a pump. Um, to to coming to renewables where you're you're on the cutting edge, you're forging new new ground every day. Um, be it with innovative projects like uh, pump storage, battery storage, uh, we're developing some of the first offshore wind turbines in in the United States. Um, you're always looking for new ways to to broaden your industry because it's still growing. You know, it's not in decline; it's in, in it's in that growth that growth phase. So with that comes the opportunity, the the ability to get on the tip of the spear and and start. Um, 
you know, impacting change. You know, I remember um, as a wind turbine technician, I immediately noticed an inefficiency with the way we did work orders. And I, I submitted that through my, my chain and we changed it for the entire company just with the suggestion from somebody at the bottom, right? And, and that was just, it blew my mind coming from Nuke Power where that just would never ever happen. Um, so it, it, it's been an exciting run and um, you know, the, the opportunities are, are massive. Um, you know, I, I know, I, I, in fact, I, I do agree, Dave, I think we are helping you with a, uh, a solar project up there in Northern Nevada. So I it, it definitely uh, reminded me there, so. But yeah, it, it, the 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 growth is amazing. Absolutely. Anybody else want to chime in on any of the innovative uh, technologies or things that your companies are doing and the jobs that they hire for? I can help out with those. Um, one of the things that's really important to us is just be no matter what age you are coming in. And this is something I mean, we're all a little bit older sitting here on the phone. You're watching us and some of you might be younger coming through the, the, the school program. We hire everyone from 18 years old to 70 years old. If you want to work and you want to do and be in an industry that's constantly changing and there's always something going on, we're bringing you in. We want you with a little bit of skill. We want you with a ton of skill and everything in between because just because what we hire you for today doesn't mean that's what you're doing six months, one year, six years, 10 years down the road. I mean, I came in, I've got an environmental horticulture degree. I grew turf grass in college. I went to the Navy, shot missiles, never used that degree, then came into the engineering world buying large power transformers. Again, never one of these things shall meet the two, but we want, we learn. It was, it's kind of as Dave said, the military is going to make you learn. It's going to make you try and do things you're a little uncomfortable about. And if you're willing to do that, you will find a job somewhere within our industry. And again, we don't need a ton of background. We don't need a ton of experience. We want that desire to work and that desire to be part of an industry that is growing. So again, you don't have, you can come to us with a psychology, like say a psychology degree or come back with, you know, you shot, you were a GM and you know, you did, you all you did was weapons. I promise you, you'll find a job in our, in our community and grow with it. So don't be afraid to apply for a job that you may think that you don't have a background in, especially if you connect through these different groups like your troops to energy or through the DOD or all of our different military hiring organizations. We'll find you if you want to work for our companies, we'll find you a job. That is a guarantee. We we want to bring in more veterans, especially the army guys so I can make fun of them, you know, telling how cool the Navy is. So again, bring in your all, any and little little to all experience, we'll take it all. It's great. Great advice, Jennifer. And on that note, I think what, what I'll do is just open it up. What other advice, if, if you had one piece of advice for the folks that are listening on the phone, what would that be? Who wants to go next? I'll go. Um, James. One thing that I wasn't aware of until actually a few years after I got out, uh, Dave hit on it a lot, that uh, in the military, you're forced to learn things. And after a while, it, it's so ingrained in you, you, you really don't know what you know until you get out. Um, when you are when you get out, civilians and veterans are asked the same questions. Are you a team player? And everyone's going to say yes. But the answer to that question, it meant so much more. I, I took it as different to me than what it meant to someone else. Um, do you, uh, uh, are you, you know, I think what we're really an experience that I had was we had a lack of procedures in solar, and uh, the director had, had was coming to around the teams and and uh, was asking questions about you know are we going to hire a third party to write procedures, and you know me being a you know retired chief I stand up and said what are you talking about why are we going to pay somebody to write our procedures we got enough talent in this room. Uh, to write our own procedures. You know, I've worked, I've worked in shipyards. I've written work packages. I know what a procedure is. And, and these guys here are the ones that are doing it. And then that's when I realized that uh, at, I need to watch my mouth because the next thing I know, the next weekend, I'm uh, director said, hey, here's the card. Go buy some pizza. I need, uh, I need about 27, 20, 30 procedures by next week. I said, okay, no problem. And I got in a room with those four guys that I pointed out as being my teammates. And I realized that they're not the same caliber of people I worked with three years ago. And uh, um, 
the get it done attitude, the make it happen, it, it's not the same. Um, you know, I, even when I was working hourly uh, uh, in the construction, guys were telling me to slow down. You're not getting paid by the hour. You know, uh, this, the work will be here tomorrow. And I didn't see that. I didn't I didn't visualize work with that kind of mindset. You know, it's like we got a job to do. Let's get it done. And 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 the guys in the military now that are transitioning out, you don't know what kind of skill sets you really have. Uh, and you'll find out when you can when you when you get a new set of uh, co-workers or peers to compare yourself to. You've got you'll be looked at as being uh, competitive, but not. You know, you won't feel competitive. You, it's just the way you work, the way you drive, and everyone else is going to look at you, and, and you're going to shine regardless of, uh, uh, of how you feel. You know, you're going to be shining, standing out, making the recommendations, you know, making the good calls, and and doing the good reports. Um, just communication alone, we communicate differently, and 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 the value of what we put out is way differently than what what a normal person would report out. At report out of and I don't have a superiority complex against civilians I'm just saying trend analysis uh you know it's just the way it seems and uh just keep that in mind when you when you compete with uh or yeah. with uh, everyone else see yeah and James I agree and I think that um having veterans recognize that they are they have it and feel confident that what they bring to the table. Um, but we're just like any other industry. I think, you know, it's not, this is what you explained and talked about is not just the energy industry. I mean, every veteran that goes to work in a civilian world will encounter that no matter where they go work. Um, you'll see that. Um, but we've got some great people in the energy industry as well and peers that you're gonna work with. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, yes. Thanks, James. Okay, who wants to go next? Dave, Larry? Sure, I'll jump in. The, okay. uh, my piece of advice would be is to not be scared of those opportunities when they come up. Uh, you heard from all, almost everybody on this call that they were suddenly challenged with an opportunity that they hadn't done before, and they jumped into it and were wildly successful. That's one of the things that the military, it may not seem like it at the time, but the military teaches you to be very adaptable, and you're able to shine and do all those things that you're supposed to, so me personally, when I'm hiring for people and what I tell the folks that, that work with me, what we should be hiring for is drive and ability. I think Jennifer kind of touched on a little bit. Don't worry about how much you have experience you have in one particular area. Get yourself in the door and prove that you've got the background, ability and drive to do that job and you'll learn it faster than anybody else and you'll do it better. And do, take that up with your schoolwork too. You know, I learned that along the way is that my first uh, go around with school, I mean, it's the student veterans. Uh, my first go around with school was a horrible mess. <laughs> I was immature. It didn't work for me. And I ended up being the janitor at the shopping mall. That's where I was at before I joined the military. And, you know, now sometime later have really progressed through nearly every level of the company and uh, feel great about where that ended up and my military service. And I'll tell you my schoolwork, uh, straight A's once I went back as an adult and got my stuff sorted. So if you're in school now, use all that experience, get those great grades, get your door cracked open for you. And once you get in there, show that driving ability and ability to learn, and you will be wildly successful. Yeah. And Dave, yeah. you talked about, I think the other thing is that um, most energy companies provide tuition reimbursement. Absolutely. So once you're, uh, you got your degree, you go into the organization. If you want to continue to go back to school and get your degree, obviously, tuition reimbursement is there to help. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's that's yeah. a great opportunity for all veterans that are out there that that want to go ahead and start in the industry, get your degree along the way. That's exactly what I did. Uh, spent a lot of time going to school, both before the military, which was unsuccessful, as I noted, and then uh, during the military. And when I got out, it was a whole different ball game. Uh, at some point, you're doing it both for yourself and your family, and you just get done and you do really well with it. And then when you, you take that experience and that education and keep pushing forward, and it really enables folks to be successful. So yeah. definitely take advantage of that tuition reimbursement I have everywhere I've worked. That's great. Thank you, yeah. Dave. That's huge. Yeah, and to to add my piece of of, uh, <clears throat> of advice, you know, don't be the one to tell yourself no. You know, um, kind of echoing Dave and 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 James, it, don't don't have a preconceived uh, disability when you're going into these these job interviews or when you're looking for opportunities. 
Um, you know, if if you're not the right fit, you know, the hiring manager will figure it out. But, you know, don't limit yourself just because you you don't have that piece of paper, um, you know, in your hand that, that says that you went to a fancy college or something like that. Um, your, your drive and ability, your, your ability to learn and be flexible um, is worth its weight in gold. It really is. And, and it shines with our, our uh, veteran representation out in the field and, and on this panel. Um, you can really see that we, I went from, uh, you know, handling wrenches and grease guns to, you know, operating a, a, a massive facility and learning. No one walks into a, um, a budget meeting for the first time knowing exactly how your company, you know, figures out gross margin and depreciation. No one knows that, even if you're an accountant. Um, but you need to go in there and learn and, and quickly attenuate that information and then turn it into results. And that's what we can do. And that's what we really need to market as veterans when we're being in the in these interviews and, and approaching problems. So. That's great. Thank you all. This is very impressive. What an what a team. Um, thank you all for taking the time uh, to be here today. Before we wrap up, I just want to uh, reiterate to the folks listening that go on Troops to Energy Jobs website, find the jobs, look at the jobs, and look at the job descriptions. But we also have a virtual coach. And uh, you can tap into the virtual coach, uh, send him an email, and he will work with you to really look at your skills and align them to the jobs and talk to you about how do you write a resume in a way that civilians will look and listen and see what you have to offer. So um, he was very, very helpful. He was in the Navy, actually, and then worked in the energy industry. So uh, very helpful. So tap into that resource. It's free. It's there. It's available. Um, take a look at the uh, Troops to Energy Jobs on the registration site. We have a list of company and military recruiters. Tap that military recruiter. Ask questions, specific questions. They're there because they are also a veteran. They were in the military. They know. And they're there to support you and help you as well. And so very responsive. And then we have a couple of other um, sessions that we recorded, one on electric, one on gas, one on nuclear, one on uh, cybersecurity and information technology. And then the last one was on the energy industry. If you haven't seen those uh, short clips, please join and find out more about the energy industry and the great opportunities that we have. Um, thank you all for your service. Um, I'm very impressed and, and thank you for your time today um, and uh, good luck to all of you. Good luck to those attending and uh, take care. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.